Axios in Express, JavaScript Object Notation Request Bodies. All HTTP messages contain headers, information about the request or response. We have an example here of the HTTP request, and its headers are host, user agent, and accept. Notice the colon between the header and its corresponding value. So the request has information about the request, what host it's looking for, what was the user agent of the request, and what the corresponding uh, response will accept. And then we see example of a HTTP response, but also with its own he headers. X powered by, content type, content length, e tag, date, connection, and keep alive, all of which have its own values. These headers define information about the incoming request and then information about the outgoing response. We have examples here of HTTP. Notice for each of these, particularly within the request, git is used with the corresponding HTTP verb git, the path slash example, and the protocol HTTP slash 1.1. These all are headers, information about the request or response. When dealing with other HTTP verbs beyond git, extra information can be used. HTTP communication using the P's, put, patch, and post, can carry additional information along with its headers known as request bodies. These are bodies data carried along with the header of their request. Notice right here an additional example of a HTTP put request with a request body. It also has the same general headers, in this case though using the HTTP verb put instead of the previous example of get. Notice on this first line put the path slash example, the protocol HTTP slash 1.1, the extra headers that also were showed up in the previous example, host, user agent, content type, and accept. In this case though, the value of content length, which in the previous example was two, is now 43. It has the additional request body. In this case though, at the end of this put request body example, it is JavaScript object notation content. Notice it has first name as a property with a value Dan, last name as a property with a value Cox. So this is an example of request body, additional data sent along with a request, additional body corresponding with the headers already set as part of the P's, put, patch, and post. So how do we send this data from a client and then interpret it on the server side? From the client side within JavaScript, we can use a library called Axios, which will handle encoding the data we want as part of the JavaScript object notation and sending it along with any requests we make. Axios accepts a data, remember bodies data, object as a second argument to its put, patch, and post methods. So because we can send request bodies with put, patch, and post, Axios assumes that anything used as a second argument to these methods, put, patch, and post, will be data objects and will, because JavaScript object notation is commonly used, automatically encode any of these values as JavaScript object notation and send it along with the request as the bodies of that request by default. So notice this then useful Axios code. We're using the put method. The first argument is a string value of the URL, its protocol, HTTP colon slash slash, its domain, local host, then the path slash example. The second argument though is an object with two properties. First name, the value of Dan, and last name with the value of Cox. This is the request body corresponding to the request being generated by axios.put. It will use the HTTP verb put. It will send using HTTP as the protocol, using localhost as a domain, and the path of slash example. And of course, we'll encode along with that the request body. But this has been the example of a client side sending information from a client to a server. What does it look like from the server perspective? In the server perspective, we can use a framework called Express. In Express, the method JSON, lowercase JSON, will parse all incoming request bodies as JavaScript object notation and convert the text form into JavaScript objects. The reason why this is not automatically done in Express is that request bodies can actually be other forms of data. 
There could potentially be binary forms of data, XML or YAML or other things. So in Express, we need to specify, hey, all the incoming request bodies should be interpreted as JavaScript object notation, and then Express will handle it from there. We also have to use this lowercase JSON method as part of the use method on the created Express server. This combines to do two different things. Notice in the Express code app.use, and then inside this, express.json. This combines to do two things. The app.use method is across all incoming requests, and the express.json method translates out the incoming request body text as JavaScript object notation and creates JavaScript objects from that, handling all the parsing of the data. When this is used as these combined two methods, app.use, and then as an passed as an argument to that express.json, all routes then have access to request.body. However, because request.body can only be used with the P's, put, patch, and post, we see an example down here at the bottom of this slide, app.put, it's listening for the path slash, and then any incoming information expressed as a request body would become part of the request.body object. This allows very easy access to any incoming properties as part of that object. So as this slide shows, we can write Axios code on the client side to encode things using the P's, put, patch, or post, the URL we are sending the data, and then the data itself as a second argument to those corresponding methods, put, patch, and post. In this particular example on this slide, notice the second argument to the put method is an object with its two properties, first name with the value of Dan, last name with the value of Cox. Then at the bottom of the slide is the express code for the server. Notice it is listening on or listening for put on the path slash example corresponding to the axios code, axios.put, app.put on the server side, listening for the path slash example. Then, because this express code would understand all incoming requests as part of JavaScript object notation, it would convert the text back out of the message and into properties once again. So on the client side, they exist as properties of an object, first name, and then the value Dan, last name, and then the value Cox, and then express handles converting the reback into JavaScript objects again as part of the request.body object. So we see here request.body.firstName, first name matching the exact capitalization of the property on the client side, and last name matching the exact capitalization on the client side and the server. So we see the encoding of the data on the client side, first name with the value of Dan, last name with the value of Cox, and then on the server side, request.body.firstName, request.body.lastName. Using though, and noting this, app.use, and then within that, express that JSON to purposely parse all the text, incoming request text, as part of the request body object as for any route. Okay, to see this in action, I'm going to move over to Visual Studio Code, and we'll look at an example of using Axios to send put request, then using Express to understand those put requests and their request bodies and to send information back to client code. So let me move over to Visual Studio Code. So in Visual Studio Code, I have separated my code into two different Node.js projects. We have client and server. I have also used the split editor function within Visual Studio Code, this right here, to split my editor right here and have my client code right here and my server code right here. At the bottom of this, I have also split my terminal using the split terminal functionality. You split the client code right here and the server code right here, and I've used this middle to align these up. So all the client code is in this column, and all of the server code is in this column. So let's talk a second about the client code, and then we'll talk about the server code, and then actually run this code here. Over here on the client, um, because all of the methods of Axios are promises. I'm using async and await. I will await for the promise to finish. 
So the first argument right here to the put method is the URL I'm using in this particular example. The protocol, HTTP colon slash slash, the domain, localhost, and then the port I'm using for this example, 8888, and then the path slash example. And then as a second argument to put right here, right after the comma, is this object right here that was seen on the slides within PowerPoint. We have first name with the value of Dan and last name with the value of Cox. So this will encode this data as a JavaScript object notation and send it as part of the request body along with this URL to the server. So over here on the server side, then let's jump over here and look at this. Notice I've added this line six app.use. So for all routes and then express that JSON lowercase here. So this parses all incoming request bodies, particularly on the P's put patch and post, and then will translate all incoming request body text as JavaScript object notation, converting it back into a JavaScript object on the server side. What this gives, what this gives us access to is request.body for any particular routes. So I'm using axios.put on the client to send a put request over to the server. On the server side, I am listing right here, app.put for put requests on particular the path slash example. Notice it matches over here, slash example. So slash example using put on the port 8888 right here and gives me access to request.body, which is generated using express.json inside app.use. All of which is to say we can then now pass information as part of a request body on the P's put patch and post from the client to the server. In this particular example, it's going to send an encoding of the object we give it here as a second argument to put this right here. It will convert it into JavaScript object notation, send it to the server as part of the request body. On the server side, it will use express.json to convert that text back into a JavaScript object as part of request.body. Right here on my line nine on my server code, it will then respond back with request.body. So the information we send it as text will be converted into an object, and then the object will be converted back into text and sent back to the client. So finally, right here on line 13, it will tell us the information we sent it by responding back to the thing we sent it. In other words, we're going to send some inf information to the server. The server is going to send the information right back to us. But this is going to point out how Axios will automatically encode the data from a property right here into JavaScript object notation. Over here in Express, it will translate it out of JavaScript object notation into an object and then convert that object back into object, back into JavaScript object notation and send it back to the client. So let me show this in action. I have an index.js file over here on my server. Go ahead and start my server. Then over here on my left-hand side, I am going to go ahead and start my client, which again, will send information using a pull request to the local server using the protocol HTTP to the port 8888 to the path slash example and send along with that the request body. And we see the information echoed back right here as part of the console log for my line 13 right here. So this information was converted into JavaScript object notation as part of a request body sent over here to the server parsed from JavaScript object notation into a JavaScript object then sent right back to the client um, as JavaScript object notation, which then Axios recreated as an object. A kind of complicated roundabout way of showing how Axios will, using its put patch and post methods, automatically encode data as part of the request bodies of all outgoing requests it will send to the server. On the express side, we just need to add this line right here app.use and then inside express.json to translate and parse all incoming requests as JavaScript object notation for those request bodies. And then we get access to request that body within those routes. So this has been a review of how to use request bodies using Axios on the client side and Express on the server side.